Kia ora everyone, we're going to go over how to create a Winrose uh, for your site analysis using Ladybug, which is the plugin we just installed for Grasshopper. Once in Grasshopper, we just want to check that you've got Ladybug installed, so that's up along the top here. And the way Ladybug works is it will pull a weather file from um, basically anywhere in the world but to do that we need to um, have that weather file so to start with we're going to type in panel and put in a panel and so we're going to go get this weather file and we'll do that um, and there's a website with a map which is makes life easy uh, so we can uh, I'll put a link in the description for the ladybug.tools map um, and you can type in, I'm just going to do Wellington because that's where we're looking, uh, so depending on where you are and I'm just going to do this one here, there's a few files, ideally you want to try and get the one closest to your site, so you can just click on there and it's got here click oh sorry copy link to clipboard so I click on that and we head back over to uh, grasshopper double click in the little panel we've created and paste uh, the um, URL that we've just created and then make sure you're in ladybug and then we come up to the top here uh, and it's got download weather so we can click on that one And add that so we can just put that uh, weather URL into there then we want to sort of process that so import this EPW file so one next to the one we just used and open that and we can connect these two and this allows us to to pull out separate parts of that data and then we're going to want to create a Winrose so uh, under the visualized data we've got Winrows there so we can click and bring that in and what we want to start with is win direction we can type that one in and then we need um, another uh, sort of more information to help create the, the, the wind row so what we can do here is it's got wind speed um, so we're going to bring that in and then automatically this sh should have created a uh, wind rose for us which is really useful um, and it gives us some insight into to the wind conditions within um, your site thereabouts so these are general terms so every site will have micro conditions to, to be aware of but this gives us some some information so that's how we create the Winrose. Now we want to sort of use it a little bit. So I'm just going to come over to just close it. Let's come move that over. And we'll come into Rhino and uh, create a new layer. So you may one another way is just right click right new layer. And I'm going to type in Wind Rose. So that we can make sure that that's uh, there for when we're ready to use it. Um, in this case, there's a few sort of things that we can do. What I'm going to do uh, is just move all the other parts uh, so that our model is. Um, directly at zero zero so we, I'm just going to do this close for now so roughly our model is now and you can see I didn't quite pick everything up so let's um, and then select all of that make sure you get it all that's better and move down and I'm just using this as a way to get us to to be pretty close to zero zero on the coordinates. You can also move that if you want. 
And what that does is it just, we can sort of get a sense of where the wind's affecting our sight. So you can see predominantly in Wellington at least that um, the wind is coming at our sight from the north and sort of thereabouts. And that's the strongest. So if we look, this is meters per second. So it gets up into uh, meters per second. And this is over a, a whole year, I think. So if we just pan down, it'll tell us. Yeah, period uh, for one year. So 1st of the 1st to the 12th of the 31st. Um, and that just gives us a sense of majority of the winds coming from the north and then uh, the next lot, which is about the same amount, uh, speed wise um, but not as often uh, is coming from the south so what we can also now do is we can bake that out this is going to do some weird things so uh, we'll just play with that and I'll show you how to deal with it so I'm going to right click on the center there and bake and go uh, and rather than just leave it to normal Oh, where's that layer didn't come in so let's just go back and see oh it didn't create it let's just work with that wind row hopefully that's got it now so now if we come back into grasshopper right click on our wind rows and then go bake and yeah, then we can select wind rows here and go OK. And for me, I don't quite know why it makes the text go pretty crazy. So we're just going to quickly deal with that. Uh, so we can just close for a second. Uh, and I'm just going to turn all the other layers off. And I'm going to make that the target layer. Just turn all those off. So now we've just got our wind rows that we've created. The text freaks out so I'm just going to click on the text uh, and change uh, this to one and see what happens. That's a bit better. Move that down. You might, this is a bit uh, sort of almost scientific for us so you can go through and edit this down a little bit and make it a little bit more uh, useful for the design document. So I'm just going to delete some of these. It's good to understand this, so, uh, but I'm just going to delete it for now. Uh, maybe uh, and we don't need the time zone. So you can just do that. Uh, Clean that up a little bit and move that up. So then we want to click, let's just select some of this text. Uh, so I've selected multiple bits of text and I'm going to make try one, see how that goes. Um, that's looking pretty good, um, so I'm just going to leave that for now. I would come and just tidy these up a little bit. It, it's a bit too accurate for what we need, so um, come in and just select that one and just say 27. That's fine for us, uh, or even could be 24. Just a, makes it a little bit easier to understand um, in the render view. And then I'm going to select the big text, oh, hold down shift, and select, oh, select that. And let's try, we'll start with one, see what that goes. That's probably fine for now. And then I can just come around and select. The smaller ones. Um, 
and let's just put that down to try point point five. And even that's probably a little bit much information, so we can just tidy this up a bit. Get rid of some of these maybe. a little bit easier to understand um, and we can tidy it up further but that'll do for now and then I'm just going to select all that and uh, group it so I'm just going to type in group um, and that just makes it a bit easier for us to, to move around so I can put that over there and we can export that out um, as a uh, another file if we want to use it in another piece of software but we've got that for now so hopefully that will just yeah so hopefully that'll give you some idea about how to start to design now with your uh, in relation to the wind for your site